Hello. In my opinion, the most important part of any watercolour painting is the sky. It sets the whole mood and atmosphere for the picture. I think we'd all love to paint beautiful skies full of atmosphere and light. And when we do, we're quite excited by it and we can't wait to get on with the rest of the picture. It's very motivating. However, if it doesn't work out very well, we're a bit disappointed and frustrated. And I think often we feel like giving up. So I'm going to show you several different methods and techniques for painting skies. And I think it will really pay dividends if you practice these over and over again and absorb them into your own style of painting. So let's have a look at the first example. I'm going to start just by drawing out a few lines just to get me the feel of the subject. Nothing too complicated at this stage. Now in this photograph, if the sky's quite a little bit bland, it's not very interesting, but we're going to put a bit more colour into it than that. I'm going to mix three washes. I'm going to use a large number 16 brush so that I mix plenty of paint. Better to have some left over than to run out halfway through. And the first colour I'm going to mix is a thin wash of Naples yellow. And the second colour is cobalt blue with a bit of cobalt violet to warm it. And then the third wash, cobalt blue again with cobalt violet, just the same as the last colour. And this time I'm going to grey it with a bit of burnt sienna. Now it's very important that I mix the colour first like that because when I start painting the sky I don't want to have to stop to mix some more colour. This is very much a wet in wet sky. So all the, the upper part of the paper, right down to the horizon line, I'm going to wet that with a large flat brush and I'm just laying in a wash of clear water. Now I'm going to use a one inch filbert brush. Ideal for skies, it's a flat brush, but it's rounded at the edge so it doesn't give square shapes in your sky, it gives nice round edges like clouds. And I'm going to just float this Naples yellow in, in the lower part of the sky, down towards the horizon. Then wash my brush. If I've got that yellow on the brush and I dip it in the blue, I'll get a, I'll get a green, which I don't want. And now I'm going to pick up the cobalt blue and cobalt violet and bring that in from the top of the sky. Just keeping this loose wet in wet effect. And now I'm going to take the grey mixture. I'm going to use that pretty much in the lower part of the sky to look like shadow from clouds. Working it along, it works in with that Naples yellow. And go back in with a little more of the cobalt blue and cobalt violet the top as well with it to darken it a little bit at the top and really that's it that's all I have to do it's important that you don't spend too long on this stage so you leave some nice areas of light in the picture instead of covering it all up with paint we just need to let that dry now well that's dried out now and what we've got is a nice loose wet in wet sky with some nice colors in it now I think no sky is quite complete without it set in a landscape so I'm just going to do quite a simple landscape like a, a view across a lake here just to finish off the picture for you. I'm going to use a number 12 brush and the bottom part of the picture where it meets the horizon, where the sky meets the horizon, I'm just going to dampen that again with clear water. I'm now going to use the same two colours again, the cobalt blue and cobalt violet and then the same mixture mixed with a bit of burnt sienna, just like we used in the sky. It's quite important to keep the same colours throughout so you have that continuity. So just float these in to create loose shapes to represent these trees across the lake. Now I'm picking up the grey mixture and bringing that down to a nice flat level line. Now again we just need to let that dry before we do a final finishing touch to it. Well now that's dried, I'm just going to put a, a little bit more detail in now to complete the picture. So I'm going to put a couple of trees in a bit more detail across the lake in the distance here. 
And for that, I'm going to mix a very thin wash of burnt sienna and just grey that slightly with a bit of cobalt blue. And it's really about putting a simple shape in to represent some trees just across the water there. A bit more here as well, I think. And while that's drying now, we'll look at painting the water. And I'm going to wet all the foreground area, taking care to leave a little bit of clean white paper at the edge of the horizon, just under those trees. Now, because the water's a reflection, where I had that Naples yellow at the base of the sky, that's got to be at the top of the water, so we'll put that one in first. Just trying to preserve that little bit of white where it meets the trees there. And now the next colour is that bit of burnt sienna and cobalt blue and cobalt violet. And work that in while the Naples yellow is still damp. And now, just finish this off with the cobalt blue and cobalt violet. So the colour I had at the top of the sky is now at the bottom of the water. Now there's one little thing, I'm just going to use a very fine brush, a number four, with a good sharp point, just to finish off a bit of detailing on those trees across the water. I'm still going to use cobalt blue and burnt sienna, but quite a bit thicker now. Again, not too much detail, because I've got to remember these are quite a way across the, across the, into the middle distance. I've not got it quite level there, so I'm going to fill in a little bit just to get the line level. So there we are, quite a simple scene really that's nearly three quarters sky, just painted with four colours to create that harmony throughout the painting. We could leave it like that, or if we wanted to take it further, add a bit of foreground interest, but remember to still use that same four colours, as I've done here. In this example, we made an uninteresting pale sky more colourful. It's important to have all the colours ready before you wet the background with clear water, and then to paint quickly and not overwork, and make the sky lighter towards the horizon. This one's going to be a dramatic stormy sky, great fun to paint, and I've pre-mixed four washers. We've got a wash of raw sienna, cobalt blue, neutral tint, and sepia. And it's very important that I wet the paper first and float these colours in and let them merge together on the paper. So I need to work quite quickly. I've just drawn a pencil line across to represent the horizon. I'll give the painting a nice even coating of clean water. It's important that it is even because you don't want puddles forming and bring that right down to that horizon line and then straight away with the large filbert brush I'm going to start laying in the raw sienna putting this more towards the bottom of the sky And now the cobalt blue, and I'm bringing that in, starting at the top. Now the neutral tint, and let a bit of that mix with the blue on the paper. Indicate some smaller clouds to help with the perspective. And finally, the sepia. Starting at the top, if generally your sky is darker towards the top, again that helps with the perspective.
and we'll leave that to dry. Very important there that you work quickly and let those colours merge and mix on the paper. And now that that's dry, I'm just going to put a simple landscape in just to complement the sky and complete the picture. But again, I'm going to stick to those same colours that I've used so far. So taking a number eight brush, I'm going to mix together some neutral tint and cobalt blue. This is a stronger mixture than I used in the sky. It's a little bit thicker. And I want to suggest some, some cliffs away off in the distance. I'm adding a touch of water to vary the tone so that it's not all one flat colour. And I'm making this line diminish as it gets further and further away and then we'll let that dry. And now that that's dry, I'm just going to finish it off like a beach scene with a bit of sandy colour. So I'm going to mix some more raw sienna. But this time it's just a little bit stronger. So I'm using my number 16 brush so I can get quite sweeping strokes. I'm bringing that across. I'll leave a little gap out to look like the to represent the sea coming in at the right hand side. And now as that comes down to the bottom of the picture, I want to introduce a bit of darker colour for shadow. So I'm going to take some more of that raw sienna and I'm going to add a bit of sepia to it. And sweep that in across the foreground with quite rapid strokes, keeping the lines parallel so it describes the flat shape of the landscape. And now while that's still wet, to make it really harmonise with the sky, I'm going to put that other colour in, some neutral tint. Don't be afraid to come quite dark for foregrounds. It really brings it forward. And now just to suggest this bit of C, I'm going to use a number 8 brush. And starting with a bit of cobalt blue, continue that horizon line. And then introduce a little bit of the neutral tint into it. Try and leave a little bit of dry white paper to look like the, the breakers. OK, and that's all we need to do to do a painting with a, a strong, heavy, stormy sky with a brightly lit landscape. In this heavy, dramatic sky, wet the paper evenly. You don't want puddles on the surface. Keep the four washers separate on your palette so they can merge on the paper. This can sometimes create new and interesting colours. Make the sky darker at the top and lighter towards the horizon and float your colours in quickly and then leave it alone to dry.